This is the ninth video in our series about fluids, electrolytes, and acid-base disturbance. Today we're going to talk about sodium and water and their hemodynamics and why you should care. So let's get started. Some words of wisdom. What a different story men would have to tell if only they would adopt a definite purpose and stand by that purpose until it had time to become an all-consuming obsession. Always have a dream and never let your dream down. Cell membrane transport is either passive or active. Osmosis is a passive diffusion. No ATP, no carrier needed. The water that follows electrolytes blindly is an obligated water. Define osmosis, simple diffusion of water. Osmotic pressure, pressure needed to stop osmosis. Osmol, osmosis caused by a mole. Osmolality, the amount of force per volume measured in milliosmos per kilogram. This is osmolality. Osmolarity per liter. Plasma osmolality normally is 290. This is called the measured osmolality. How about calculated osmolality? 2 times sodium plus glucose over 18 plus BUN over 3. Quick hack, you can double the sodium and add 10. The most significant plasma osmol is sodium and also is the major extracellular fluid cation. Water follows sodium, so cell can swell or shrink due to sodium problems. If this cell is in your brain, you'll get mental status abnormalities. Mnemonic, sodium, CNS. Okay, let's suppose that you have hyponatremia. What does that mean? Hypo means low. Natrium is sodium. Amia is the blood. When you have low sodium in the blood or in the plasma, here is the sodium. The water will follow the higher concentration of sodium. Now the higher concentration is in the cell. Water will flow from the ECF compartment to the ICF compartment. ICF will expand, the cell will swell. If this cell is in your brain, you get mental status abnormalities. This is hyponatremia. How about hypernatremia? Lots of sodium in the plasma, water follows sodium. Water flows from the ICF to the ECF compartment. The ICF compartment contracts. Make believe that this is your brain, you get mental status abnormalities. As you know, the total body water is 60% of your body weight. Two thirds in the cell, one third outside of the cell. Can be in the plasma, interstitial space, which is the majority of the ECF, or can be in the transcellular fluid, which means just cavities. Synovial fluid in your joint, serous fluid, the serous membranes, the three Ps, pleura, pericardium, peritoneum, CSF and the intraocular fluid. It's a teeny tiny amount. The majority of the ECF is in the interstitial space. What happens if total body water increases? If total body water increases, water in the ECF will increase because ECF is a main part of the total water. Cool. What will happen then? Sodium in the ECF gets diluted. There is dilutional hyponatremia. It's not a true hyponatremia. It's a dilutional hyponatremia. There is relatively less sodium in the plasma now. However, the total body sodium is normal. Yep. So, total body water increased. What happened to the serum sodium? It gets diluted. There is an inverse relationship between them. Serum sodium is inversely proportional to total body water. This is very important. That's why serum problems of sodium are usually due to water problem, not sodium problems. Let me give you an example. We said when you have lots of water, you get hyponatremia. So the hyponatremia was not because of decreased total body sodium. It was because of increased total body water. Let's do the exact freaking opposite. What happens if total body water decreases? Decreased total body, body water will decrease the extracellular fluid water. Sodium now gets more concentration. It's as if we have more sodium. This is called hypernatremia. However, the total body sodium is unchanged. This time we had decreased total body water, which leads to increased serum sodium. Again, they are inversely related. 
So the hypernatremia was not due to an increase in total body sodium. However, it was due to a decrease in total body water. Sodium problems in the serum are due to water problems. So where can we find the total body sodium? It's everywhere. It's in the ECF and ICF, but the majority is in the ECF. And the ECF can be in the interstitium or the plasma. The main portion is the interstitium. What happens if the total body sodium increases? If total body sodium increases, ECF sodium is going to increase because this is where sodium is. So when ECF sodium increases, plasma or serum sodium is going to increase. So the relationship between serum sodium and total body sodium is a directly proportional type of a relationship. Now we have two equations. Serum sodium concentration is inversely proportional to total body water. Serum sodium concentration is directly proportional to total body sodium. From 1 and 2, remember these good old days, serum sodium is related to total body sodium over total body water. We call this the silver equation. Why not serum sodium equals total body sodium over total body water? No. If you, you want to remove this sign and put equal, you have to, be, to put equal a constant times total body sodium over total body water. This is basic math, but this is so complicated. Let's, let's leave it this way. Applications on my famous silver equation. Okay, remember the golden equation, the one about CO2 and bicarbonate? I've talked about it in a previous video, but this I call the silver equation. What happened if you gained an isotonic fluid? So this is normally, here's the cell and here is the plasma. You have water and we have the green solute, which is sodium. When we gain an isotonic fluid, let's add three water and three sodium particles. Now, what will happen? You tell me. So. Let's draw the cell and let's draw the plasma, the water in the plasma, and let's draw the sodium. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, what happened to the extracellular fluid compartment? It expanded. See, from here to here, it increased. What happened to the serum sodium? And the answer is no change. We gained an isotonic fluid. We gained an equal amount of water and sodium serum sodium is not going to change the silver equation works what happened to serum osmolality if serum sodium concentration is normal then the osmolality is normal what happened to the icf okay when you gain an isotonic fluid will you create any type of an osmotic gradient to pull water out or in the answer is no because we increased sodium and we increased water, the osmolality didn't change, so there is no osmotic gradient. Brilliant! So there is no change to the ICF. Your cells are not going to swell, they're not going to shrink. Sometimes your stupid test requires you to represent these facts in these types of stupid graphs. So, and like students lose their minds. It's very easy. It's like fifth grade math. So, ICF here, ECF here. On the x-axis we have the volume, on the y-axis we have the plasma osmolality. I've told you in the previous slide that when we gain an isotonic fluid, ECF expands. So, let's expand the volume of the ECF. Volume increased. Volume increased. Serum osmolality, no change. So, don't change the y-axis. ICF compartment, no change. So, don't increase the ICF compartment. Leave it as it is only the ECF is expanded. So let's play a different game. What happens if you lose an isotonic fluid? So here is the cell, water and solute. We lost water and we lost solute by the same ratio. Now what will happen? Let's draw the nice cell and let's draw our plasma now and let's draw the solute. Okay, cool. What happened to the extracellular fluid compartment? It contracted. You lost fluid, you idiot. What happened to the serum sodium? Use the silver equation. We lost total body water. We lost total body sodium. Serum sodium concentration has no change. What happened to the serum osmolality? If there is no change to the serum sodium concentration, there is no change to the osmolality. Remember, osmolality was 2 times sodium. Sodium was the king of osmolality. So when sodium stays the same, osmolality stays the same. What happened to the ICF? Okay, we lost an equal amount of salt and water. 
Will this create an osmotic gradient? The answer is no. No water will move in or out. So there is no change to the ICF. Your cell is not gonna swell and it's not gonna shrink. Now let's plot this on the foolish graph. ECF contracted, let's contract the ECF compartment. Serum osmolality no change, don't change the Y axis. ICF no change, leave it alone. It's super easy. Now let's make it harder. What will happen if you gained a hypotonic fluid? So here is the normal status and here is when you gained a hypotonic fluid. You only gained one sodium, but you gained like three or four waters. What will happen to the ECF when you gain a fluid, you stupid person? The answer is it's gonna expand. What happened to the serum sodium concentration? Use the silver equation. We gained hypotonic fluid, which means we gained more water than sodium. Then what will happen to this serum sodium? It's gonna decrease, baby. So what happened to the osmolality, which happens to equal two times sodium? It's gonna decrease. So it's gonna be less than 290, which is normal roughly like less than 275. Cool, what happened to the ICF compartment? Pay close attention. So here is our cell now. We gained lots of water, but not so, not so much of sodium. So now the solute concentration or the sodium concentration in the cell is relatively higher than the plasma. Water is gonna follow sodium to the ICF compartment, the intracellular fluid compartment is gonna expand and your cell is gonna swell. Make believe that this is your brain, you'll get mental status abnormalities. It's a piece of cake. Now let's use the lunatic graph. What happened to the serum osmolality? It decreased, so let's decrease the y-axis. What happened to the ECF compartment when you gain a fluid? It expands, so let's expand the x-axis on the ECF side. What happened to the ICF? It also expanded because water moved from the ECF to the ICF. So let's expand this compartment and the graph now is gonna look like this. Let's try another one. What will happen if you gain a hypertonic fluid? So here is normal. Here is when you gain more salt than water. What will happen? What will happen to the ECF compartment when you gain a fluid? It will expand. It's not rocket science. What will happen to the serum sodium? Let's use the silver equation. We gained more sodium than water. So serum sodium concentration is gonna go up. What will happen to the serum osmolality? It's gonna go up because it equals two times sodium. So now the serum osmolality increased. It's probably more than 300. What will happen to the ICF compartment? Use your brain. Now we gained more salt than water. The plasma is more concentrated than the cell. We have more sodium here relative to the inside of the cell. Water is gonna flow out of the cell. Your ICF is gonna contract, your cell is gonna shrink. Make believe that this is your brain, you will get mental status abnormalities. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's use the garbage graph. When you gain a hypertonic fluid, what will happen to the serum osmolality? It's increasing. Let's increase the Y axis. What will happen to the ECF is gonna expand. Let's increase the x-axis towards the ECF side. What will happen to the ICF? It's gonna contract. Let's decrease the volume of the ICF. Common mistake for students. They just assume that because you have hyponatremia, that means that your total body sodium has decreased. Idiots. Not necessarily. You can have hyponatremia due to an increased total body water. So there are two things here. We should measure the serum sodium and we should assess the total body sodium because one has nothing to do with the other, okay? They are not directly related. They could be related, but it's, it, it's not necessarily the case. Measuring the serum sodium is the lab technician's job because the pathologist is not doing his job. He is chasing his Ferrari, so the lab technician is doing everything. Assessing the total body sodium is the clinician's job. It's the internist's job. It's your freaking job. If you're a doctor, if you're a nurse, this is your job. The silver equation. Serum sodium equals total body sodium over total body water. Who measures the serum sodium? The lab. Who assesses the total body sodium? You. How to know the patient has hyponatremia? You draw blood, you send it to the lab. The lab is going to tell you. Um, the serum sodium was less than 135. Answer, hyponatremia. Boom, it's easy. How to know if the patient has decreased total body sodium? Okay, same thing as decreased extracellular fluid sodium. 
So now you use the physical exam. When the total body sodium is decreased, what happened to the extracellular fluid volume? It decreased because water follows sodium. If sodium, total sodium is low, your ECF water is also low. So physical exam, signs of extracellular fluid volume depletion. Dry skin, oh, no kidding. Sodium went away, water went away, everything is dry. Decreased skin turgor. Normally, normally, let's say that this is the patient's skin, okay? And with your nice hands, you pinch the skin, okay? Now the skin is like this. Leave it for like half a second and it will return back to normal. This is normal, okay? But when you have decreased total body sodium, there is decreased skin turgor. The skin is left like a tent like this. It takes more time for the skin to go back to the normal position. This is called decreased skin turgor, also known as skin tinting. It's a great sign for decreased total body sodium. What else happens when you have extracellular fluid volume depletion? You get orthostatic hypotension, because when you are volume depleted, the effective arterial blood pressure is decreased. You get orthostasis, which means when you stand up suddenly, the blood pressure is going to go down, the heart rate is going to go up. This is called positive tilt test. You start with the patient sleeping, sleeping like this on the exam table. And then you tilt the table like this, okay? And quickly measure the blood pressure here and here. If it went down and the heart rate went up, the patient is volume depleted. Orthostatic hypotension positive tilt test. Very important. Repetition is the mother of pedagogy. Serum sodium equals total body sodium over total body water. Measuring the serum sodium is the lab technician's job. Measuring the total body sodium is your freaking job. How to assess hyper, how to measure hypernatremia. So hypernatremia, just send blood to the lab and the results is gonna come up more than 145. Answer, hypernatremia. Boom, done. How to assess increased total body sodium you'll find signs of extracellular fluid volume overload because water follows sodium. If the ECF sodium went up, the ECF water is going to go up, which means extracellular fluid volume overload. You get dependent petting edema, such as ankle edema, if you are healthy and walking and still kicking, or you get edema over the spine or sacral edema if you are bedridden, God forbid. And you will have accumulation of fluid in body cavities, such as ascites, pleural effusion, pericardial effusion. These are rare than dependent pitting edema, but they are possible. What the flip is pitting edema? Pitting edema is when you touch the patient's ankle. Okay, nice ankle like this. Again, you touch the skin. Okay, you poke it like this and then remove your finger. Normally, it should go back in like seconds. But if the indentation persists and the skin is left like this, this is called extracellular fluid volume overload. The total body sodium in this patient is high. Take it to the bank. If you have less total body sodium, you have less total body water because water follows sodium. It's called osmosis. Where do we find most of the sodium? Answer ECF. Be specific, interstitial fluid or ISF. So if sodium is decreasing in the interstitial space, water is decreasing in the interstitial space and you end up with extracellular fluid volume depletion. Signs, the skin loses its resilience. When you pinch it, it doesn't return to place immediately called decreased skin turgor. What else? Skin tenting. And you have dry skin and mucous membrane. What else? You have a positive TELT test. So mnemonic, skin turgor means decreased total body volume. Skin Tenting means decreased total body sodium. Let's do the opposite. What happened if total body sodium increased? Total body water is gonna increase, which increases your body weight because 60% of your body weight is water. Where do we find most of the sodium, please? ECF, be, be specific, interstitial fluid. So when sodium in the interstitial fluid increases, water in interstitial fluid increases, this is called extracellular fluid volume overload. This is the transudate. This is the dependent pitting edema states in the ankle or in the sacrum. Define edema, please. Accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space. I bet that your professor didn't explain why interstitial space. Why not in the plasma? Why not in the ICF? And the answer is 
because that's where the majority of sodium is, you idiot. When the majority of sodium is in the interstitial space, and you have increased water, where do you think the increased water is going to be? In the interstitial space. That's what edema is. So, and you can also get accumulation in body cavities, such as ascites, pleural effusion, etc. Mnemonic, transudate means increased total body sodium. And when you have dependent pitting edema, it's a transudate. It's not an exudate. Exudates does not pit. When you have pus or infection, they don't pit. But a transudate patient with CHF, they have pitting edema. Let's get out of here. Hyponatremia, what will happen to the ICF? It's going to expand. When you have hypernatremia, ICF is going to contract. Serum sodium is inversely proportional to total body water. That's why hyponatremia or hypernatremia are usually due to water problems, not sodium problems. That total body sodium status determines the ECF volume status. If this is high, this is overloaded. If this is low, this is depleted. Boom. The total body water status determines the serum sodium concentration status. Perfect. Serum sodium concentration is not the same as the total body sodium. But ECF sodium is roughly the same as total body sodium because the majority of sodium is in the ECF and not the ICF. Cool. What happens when the total body sodium decreases? You get signs of extracellular fluid volume depletion. You get decreased skin turgor, dry skin and mucous membrane, positive tail test. By the way, this is very important. Extracellular fluid volume depletion is not the same as dehydration. Pediatricians are idiot. Oh, this kid is dehydrated. No, you're an idiot. He lost salt. He lost water. He's not dehydrated. Dehydration is only when you lose water. Extracellular fluid volume depletion is when you lose salt and water. So when you have diarrhea, what did you lose? You lost salt, you lost water. You are volume depleted, you are not dehydration. Stop it. And when those mom, oh, okay, my kid, he has, he has, he's dehydrated. I'm, I'm, I'm so afraid. I'm gonna make him drink lots of water, lots of water without any electrolytes. You're gonna kill him. What did you expect from these sucker moms? God bless them. But when you have increased total body sodium, you get signs of extracellular fluid volume expansion increased hydrostatic pressure, the transudate, the dependent pedic edema status. Clinical take-home points, my favorite part of the lecture. When you have decreased skin turgor, it means that the total body sodium is decreased. When you have skin tenting, same thing. When you have increased transudate, it means that total body sodium is high. When you have increased body weight in a hospitalized patient, that means that the total body sodium is increased. In every patient, you should assess the sodium status and the water status separately. Always ask yourself, does this patient have a sodium problem or a water problem or both? If you have increased full body sodium, will lead to increased full body water and increased body weight. And this is the silver equation. If the patient is extracellular fluid volume depleted, give them salt and water. Don't give them water only. Don't be like those sucker moms who live in the suburbs and drive a Honda Odyssey, a $55,000 car. Buying things you don't need with money you don't have to impress people you don't even like. Dave Ramsey. The most common cause of increased body weight in a hospitalized patient is increased total body sodium. Let's make this clear. Nobody gains weight in the hospital because the food is good. Okay, stop it. In Egypt, where I grew up, there is no food for patients. Patients can't even find available beds in the emergency room, let alone food. Plus, nurses eat all of the food, and nurses put their food inside the fridge that we store the vaccines in. Oh my goodness. In America, okay, yeah, nurses are cute. They are nice people. They are the cutest thing that happened since sliced bread. However, McDonald's Happy Meal for kids is tastier and more healthier than the food in the hospital that is available for patients. They serve patients food that's frozen for three years, then transported through a long haul trucking journey, and then defrosted, put in a hospital refrigerator for the patients to enjoy, while the doctors are eating gourmet food in their cafeteria. How about Japan? Give me a break. They are feeding patients sushi through the IV. I mean, I don't mind being fed sushi in an IV, but my problem with sushi is that it's undercooked. So cook it properly, give it to me intravenously, add some ginger and wasabi, and I promise you, I will readmit myself just to get the sushi. 
This is a joke, of course. I'd like to open a restaurant named Sushi Ivy. Remember, nobody gains weight in the hospital because of the freaking food. No, they are not eating more in the hospital. Stop it. When they gain weight in the hospital, it's because of increased total body sodium, you idiots. So, question of the day. This is the 10th question. The previous 9 questions are in the previous videos in this series. Your 52-year-old male patient with loop diuretics to manage his hypertension. When he first started using him, what did you expect his osmolality and ECF volume look like? Here is normal and here are your four choices. Pause, go, let me know the answers in the comments. The answer to this question is going to be in the next video. Please subscribe. See you soon. Did you know that now you can go to my Patreon page, click on video notes and choose hematology for example. You will see all of my hematology notes. There are like 150 of them. You can download them, print them, view them, do whatever you want. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicos.